Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today Hasbro had a fan stream for Transformers news. We got to see some things for Rise of the Beast, but a lot of stuff for Transformers Legacy Evolution. So let's talk about it. So they started the stream off with the Rise of the Beast Studio Series figures, and most of these we've seen before, most of which have already been officially revealed, been up for pre-order for days, weeks at this point. But they did their official reveal of Scourge. Uh, we have seen this before, it leaked out previously, so it's not a big surprise, but this was their official reveal. And he looks great, I'm really excited for this one, I think the robot mode's really cool. Definitely giving me some Transformers animated vibes, I think it's the way his neck is kind of shaped. Definitely reminding me of animated lockdown, but I think he looks really cool. Truck mode looks fantastic, I really like the kind of Mad Max feel to it. And for some reason I just really, really like the orange tinted windows. I don't know if it gives him kind of a Halloween feel because he's kind of like a dark, not quite black, but maybe dark gray and with the orange giving me some Halloween vibes there. But yeah, he looks really cool. That was the only real studio series figure for Rise of the Beast that we hadn't like officially seen or had available for pre-order yet. They went through the others real fast because they had them there so you could see them in person. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty much it for Studio Series, so now we're going to move on to uh, Transformers Legacy Evolution, because that was kind of the main focus that was the entire second wave that was revealed. So up first we have Core Class Grimlock. We get our first Dinobot and the only one that's going to be in Wave 2. We're building towards that Volcanicus Combiner, uh, so this is our third Dinobot for that set. For the most part, I think the robot mode looks okay. I like the head sculpt. I think the chest looks pretty good. Arms and legs aren't too bad. A lot of these Dinobots have kind of sacrificed their individual modes for the combiner piece. Grimlock's going to transform into a leg this time around. Uh, so we'll see. They kind of did a quick transformation of the leg uh, during the stream, but they didn't really show it off. I'll try to throw a picture of that in here. Um, it looks okay. It looks a little wonky in my opinion, but it's okay. I'll have to wait. I'm really interested to see what this thing's going to look like all together, and undoubtedly they're going to do it again as Dino King, so I'll be interested to see what that looks like. Uh, but really it's just the, the Dino mode, the T-Rex mode here for Grimlock. It's okay. Now I do think in this official product shot it is transformed incorrectly because it's got kind of what would be the bottom of his feet at the bottom as his tail. But then if you look at the back of the box, the packaging that he comes in, it has it reversed. And just like the way the original toy would transform, where kind of the bottom of his feet would fold up and become like the higher on the back section, and then, you know, like his knees would come together and that's where the tailpiece would be. I think that's actually how it's supposed to transform, but the official product shot has it incorrect. So we'll see when we actually get it in hand. If it transforms more similarly to the original toy, I think I'm gonna be okay with it. But if he's just got his giant boots just hanging out there on the back, I think that's gonna look kind of ridiculous. But again, I don't think that's correct. Um, either way, I, I still think he's better than Sludge. So sticking with Core Class, next up is Nemesis Prime, which is of course just a black repaint of the Kingdom Optimus Prime Core Class figure we've had for a while now. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. This one was a bit of a surprise. I think we saw this listed in those leaks from long ago where we just got a list with no pictures. Uh, but I was kind of surprised to see it on the stream today. They actually went out of their way to create like a little metallic teal axe. And you can actually fold the fist in and then peg that in uh, to the little peg hole there so you can actually wield the axe, which I think is kind of neat. I think it's weird they didn't do it for Optimus. I'm okay with it because I'm kind of tired of the Energon axe at this point, to be honest. But I do kind of like the way it looks in the teal. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, the vehicle mode is nothing special. Again, it's just the truck that Prime turns into. And it's not the best truck in my opinion, but it's okay. Uh, one thing I did think was interesting on the packaging, they actually show Nemesis Prime with Prime's trailer but the like design on the side of the trailer is backwards so that what would normally be in the back of the trailer is now in the front and i'm wondering if that's intentional because he's nemesis prime or if someone just messed up not really that big of a deal because we're not getting a, a trailer for this toy anyway but i just thought it was something interesting to point out on the packaging but overall i'm pretty happy with this guy i'll most likely pick it up and then rounding out core class for wave two is going to be thundercracker not really much to say here, although I will point out he does have the Null Rays back. I think they learned their lesson from Skywarp. A lot of people were unhappy that Skywarp did not have the traditional weapons. Uh, but yeah, Thundercracker looks good. 
Uh, robot mode is very blue. I will say that, but I think it works. Obviously, that's his main color attribute, color scheme. Uh, but I think, you know, maybe a little bit more pop of color, just some white, maybe the thighs being white or something like that. I'd have to go back and look at the G1 animation model, to be honest, but he's very blue. But it's fine. The trio is now complete. It's nice to have Thundercracker here. Uh, vehicle mode, I think, works a little bit better because it has more color with the red stripe on the wings and everything like that. So he looks cool. Very happy that he comes with the Null Rays. Very happy to have the trio complete. I wonder if they would ever try to do the cone heads in this scale. I think that'd be kind of interesting. Maybe they could retool uh, this mold somehow to get the cone heads out of it. I'd be interested to see what they could do. But at least for now, the original Seeker trio is complete. So moving on to Deluxe class, we'll start with Crosscut. Not really much to say here. It's just a repaint of Skids. Although I guess technically it's a repaint of Burnout because it does have Burnout's head sculpt. But I like the color scheme. I think the red, gray, and a little bit darker gray overall works really well here. And I think Burnout's head sculpt in those colors looks really good. Uh, vehicle mode, again, not really much to write home about here. Although I will say in the red plastic, the wheels look a little cheap to me. I'm sure they're perfectly fine, but especially those front wheels, I think maybe it's the lack of a pin in the center or something. I'm not quite sure, but in the red plastic, they look kind of cheesy. But overall, I'm sure this guy's going to be fine. It's just another Skids repaint. If you liked the rest, you'll probably like this one. If you feel you have enough, go ahead and pass on it. But uh, let's be honest, I'm probably going to get it. So up next for Deluxe, we have our second Junkion Crash Bar. Although I have to admit, I might have named him Handlebar after that fantastic Handlebar mustache that he has. This just looks like a really fun character. I'm liking the Junkions uh, so far. Unfortunately, I still don't have any in hand because I haven't been able to get a hold of Scrapbook yet, but I'm very excited to get a hold of them. I like the play pattern. I mean, these are kind of in the same vein as the Weaponizers where you can kind of take them apart, mix and match. But the fun thing about the Junkions is you can actually kind of get a couple extras or at least Hasbro wants you to get a couple extras and start to kind of kit bash and Frankenstein together your own characters and alt modes and things like that, which is kind of a fun idea. I probably personally won't do that, but I think that's a really neat idea. Uh, and I just think Crash Bar here looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, robot mode, really fun, really colorful. It transforms into a motorcycle, which also looks really great. Very reminiscent of the Junkions, uh, you know, in the original toys and in the movie, they all turned into motorcycles. Uh, but yeah, really, really fun. I think this one's going to be great. I'm really excited for this one and can't wait to add it to the collection. Continuing on with Deluxe Class, we have Insecticon Shrapnel. I was just thinking to myself the other day, it's been a while since Kickback came out. Where are the rest of the Insecticons? Ask and you shall receive. Shrapnel looks really fantastic. I think the robot mode looks really, really good. Uh, very faithful to the original G1 aesthetic. I just really think it looks... I don't really have much to say or critique about it. It just looks good. Insect mode is exactly what you would expect. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if this eventually gets repainted as Chop Shop. I kind of hope that they eventually do all the deluxe Insecticons off of the three molds. I feel like they could make that work. Uh, and Kickback worked great as Ransack, so I hope they continue that. But yeah, fantastic addition. Can't wait to get Bombshell to complete the trio. Shrapnel looks absolutely fantastic. And then last up for Deluxe Class in Wave 2, we have Animated Universe Prowl. This is really exciting. I mean, it's another universe, another show they're kind of bringing into the Legacy line, which is really fun. But they've done a really nice job with this. I think the robot mode looks fantastic. And I'm really excited that this figure is not just a retool of Prime Universe RC, because they're both motorcycles, and I feel like that's something that they could have tried to do. And I'm really happy here that they decided to do something new. A lot of people are theorizing that this is going to get uh, kind of retooled and repainted into Armada Sideways, which is possible. I could see that happening. It would have to be kind of an extensive retool because of that Headmaster gimmick. But really solid robot mode here. Love the ninja vibes. They did a nice job with all the little like shuriken accents, especially you can see on the vehicle mode. Uh, kind of like in the in the wheels have the little shuriken accents and things like that vehicle mode looks fantastic Although I do like how if you look pretty closely at the windshield you can kind of see his little head popping out there Which I think is pretty fantastic. So overall I'm excited about this one animated has some really fun designs So it's really fun to kind of see it modernized But still kind of holding true to the original character design and just bringing animated into this line I think it's another fun show to pull a bunch of characters and designs from I'm really excited about it. I think this guy is going to make a great addition to the collection. Okay, moving on to Voyager class. I'm really excited about both of these. 
We're going to start first with Metal Hawk. Love this character. If you guys know me at all, I am a huge fan of Master Force. And, you know, Metal Hawk is such a pivotal character to that show. He's the leader of the Autobot Pretenders. And I think they did a pretty good job with this robot mode. I wasn't expecting it to be a heavy retool of Cyclonus, but it kind of works. I think the robot mode especially looks really good. I think they did a good job with the wings and the chest and the head sculpt looks really nice. Um, where I'm a little iffy about the figure is the vehicle mode. Um, the jet looks fine and I'm sure it'll grow on me. And I do like that they had the two guns that you can peg onto the side to kind of form the back wings, just like the original toy. I think that's really cool. Um, I just, it's very obvious that it's Cyclonus in vehicle mode. And I feel like they did change it around a little bit, but is it enough? Again, I'm sure it'll grow on me. And most of the time I'm going to have him pose in robot mode anyway, which I think looks really good, but I'm still really excited for this. The last time we got a Metal Hawk was like a heavy retool of Trigger Happy, which again, worked a little bit, but wasn't perfect. So I feel like we're definitely getting closer. And I'm just happy that Master Force is getting any love because this was a Japanese exclusive Master Force character. So the fact that we're getting him in the US line is very exciting, kind of like how we got uh, Lyo Convoy in the first wave. So really liking that. I'm hoping they'll continue up with these Japanese exclusive characters. But yeah, I'm excited for this one. I think he's going to be really great. So the other Voyager class figure in this wave is another kind of Japanese exclusive character. Although I guess he's been used in the comics before. Although actually Metal Hawk has as well. Anyway, it's twin cast. He looks fantastic. A very easy repaint of Blaster to do here. But it's a great color scheme. It looks great on this mold. I'm really excited to get it. He does come with Rewind. So we got Eject with Blaster. We're getting Rewind with twin cast. So we have at least two Autobot cassettes. I'm hoping we're going to get a Ramhorn and Steeljaw somewhere in the future, whether it's a two pack or maybe bundled with some other accessories or something. I mean, Skywarp does still need Null Rays. But in any case, hopefully we'll get some more Autobot cassettes later in the future. But this guy looks great in both modes, robot mode, uh, tape deck mode. Really excited for this guy. I was kind of surprised he's in the main line. I thought maybe he was going to be like a Generation Selects or fan channel exclusive, something like that. But nope, boom, right in the middle of wave two. Very excited to pick him up. I think he looks absolutely fantastic. And then the last thing shown today is leader class Prime Universe Skyquake. This is another one that we've seen leaked for a while now, but this is nice to get an official reveal. I think the figure looks fantastic. I have to admit, I don't have the biggest attachment to this character from Prime, but I always thought the design was kind of cool. And this mold comes with like infinite repaint possibilities. So I'm sure Hasbro loves it. But overall, I think the figure looks great. Robot mode, really nice. Comes with a giant Gatling gun. Really excited that he can hold that in both hands. I think that's cool. Also comes with the translucent orange sword, which I think is really neat. Um, they talked about the vehicle mode. Now the vehicle mode again, looks great. I think it's really neat. They talked about it on stream about how it could connect to the needle nose, but uh, there are people online that already have this figure in hand and I thought they tried to connect it to needle nose and said that it couldn't, but it's still shown on the packaging that they can connect. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see if more people get these in hand. Uh, but apparently the official party line from Hasbro is that they still can connect. So I'll have to try that out. But yeah, overall, I think Skyquake's really cool. Nice to get some more Prime Universe stuff. And like I said, this mold has a lot of repaint potential. G1 characters, other Prime Universe characters. You could slightly retool it into other G1 characters. I mean, there's a lot going on with this one. I think we're going to see this one for a while. But I'm okay with it because it looks really, really nice. So I think that was everything that was released today, but there's a lot of good stuff shown off. Uh, I wanted to mention also that pre-orders are up for this stuff. They went up as of 1 p.m. Eastern time. Hasbro Pulse, Amazon, BBTS, I think I saw, you know, I'm sure Entertainment Earth, basically most places. I would assume Walmart, Target would also probably have pre-orders. I haven't seen links for those yet, but they're gonna be in store as well. So wherever you wanna make your pre-orders, I'm sure they'll be available. It's most, they said on stream, most major retailers or something like that. So they'll be around. But I think it's kind of fun, like wave one is just starting to finish because I think Hasbro Pulse updated the delivery dates for, I think the deluxes were the last of it and they are happening later this week. So wave one is on the way out as we're getting new information for wave two and all of it looks really, really great. If I had to pick a favorite personally, I think probably the two Voyager class, uh, Metal Hawk and Twin Cast, probably what I personally am most excited about, but Shrapnel also really looks great. Um, crash bar, it's gonna take me a minute, I'm 
I'm not going to get that name or I'm going to want to call him Handlebar. But anyway, a lot of those figures also look really good. So there's a lot of good in this wave. Uh, I want to just see the rest of the Dinobots. I wish that he could have just like, they're going to be a while, but can we just see everything? Because I'm really interested to see how Volcanicus is going to turn out. Because I feel like a lot of those Dinobot molds are sacrificing for the combined form. So I hope that at least looks really good. But we'll wait and see. In any case, let me know in the comments below who's your favorite, who are you most excited about, about who was shown off today. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.